Hi, this is David. In the last video, I showed you how to create a Docker container from a pre-built image. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own image, push it up to a repository, and then create a container based on that, on your own custom image. First thing you need to do is you need to install Docker, and a simple way to do that is just installing Docker Desktop. I'm going to search for it here. There it is, Docker Desktop, and right there are buttons here that'll download the install executable for Mac or Windows or Linux. I've already done that right here. Uh, the other thing is you want to have some sort of place to store your repositories, and I'm using Docker Hub. I can create an account right here. It's totally free. I named mine DGR, first initial, last name, but you can create one with your own account on here, and that's where I'm going to store my repositories. All right, the application that I'm going to place into a container is this one right here. It's only got a couple of files. There's an app.js file. It's a node application. It's going to run some HTTP. It's a web application. Uh, there's a variable called port number 8081 is the value of that. And when it runs, it's going to just tell the browser that this is HTML. It'll write out some uh, the, the current date and time. Uh, it's more HTML. And then it'll just loop through and output the numbers one through five inside of an ordered list or an unordered list right here and then write done and that's about it and that'll run on port 8081 and that's it i just it doesn't have any dependencies anything special but it does run some javascript so you can see that it's dynamic now if i want to deploy this to a container i need to create a docker file a docker file by default is actually named docker file uh, without any file extension here but you can name something else but then you have to specify in your build command, the name of that Docker file. If you name it using these conventions, you don't have to do that. And then Docker file, you put all a bunch of instructions as to what to do when I build an image based on this application. Uh, and this is just a subset of the instructions that are available here. Uh, if you want to learn more about them, there is a web page that lists these Docker file reference right here. Uh, you can read up on that, but I am just going to go through the ones that I have here. So from tells Docker what base image I'm, I'm going to use. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there's already a node image out there. And I can see the base images that are available to me on this page right here. Is it hub.docker.com? There's a whole bunch of them with just Ubuntu and Redis and Alpine Node. I use this Node one right here. And you can also see there's a bunch of different versions of it here. This is a Node using Alpine. And that's what I told. I told to use Node with version current dash Alpine. That's the, the tag right there. The label is just metadata. It doesn't actually do anything, but it's when you list your image somewhere, when you publish it somewhere, then this will be available. So putting the author or the email address is pretty common in there so that they, you can get credit for it and they can have, they know who to ask questions of about it, things like that. Uh, working directory is, um, this will be, any, if any instructions that you specify inside of the container will take place in this folder right here unless you overwrite it by specifying a directory. So if you don't specify the directory, this will be the current directory inside of the folder. The copy command says copy all the files from one folder to another folder, or you can explicitly list a file if you want to. And the dot here means for on the left side is the from, on the right side is the to. So from is always from your local computer, to is always into the container. And the dot on the left side means the current directory where you're running the, uh, the build command on your local computer, the dot on the right says the working directory. So this would copy everything. If I ran it inside of this folder, it would copy everything in this folder, which is just these two files right here, into the working directory, which is that folder right there inside of the container. And then finally, entry point says I'm going to run node with an argument app.js. So there's an array here. You can just specify a command and any arguments after that. And this will happen when I build this image using the Docker commands. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'll open up a terminal here. And first thing I'll do is I'll say Docker build. And I'm going to give this image a name with a dash T tag. And it'll first be my account 
followed by a repository name and a tag. A tag is often used for a version number here. Um, that's what I do. This is version one. Um, and then dot. And dot says everything in the current container is what I'm going to, uh, current folder is what I'm going to include. So I'll do that. It takes a few seconds. And then it's done. And now I have a Docker image. And I can see this as a command Docker image ls for list. And you can see right there, this is my image, dgr slash app1, tag is 1.0, and it, it assigned this ID B026, et cetera, for it. Um, it thinks it was created three or three minutes ago because I did this a couple of times, but uh, I just recreated it again just now. And um, that's the size of it. It's pretty small. Uh, well, most of that size is because of the image we based it on, on that node image, because it has all of node in there, but still relatively small. Not as big as if I created a virtual machine with an entire operating system, that's for sure. Uh, now I want to push that image to my repository. And I showed you this before, the repository is located right here under Docker Hub. There's my repositories. Right now I don't have any repositories at all. So I'm going to create, push this image and give it a repository and that will create a both a repo and, and and upload this image to it. The command to do that is going to be docker image push gr app one colon one point zero right here. It might, if you're not logged in, it might prompt you for a login at this point. I'm already logged in, so that didn't happen for me. And now when I do that, if I go up to here and refresh this page, I should see. There's a repo has been created, and within that repo, there is one image right here, 1.0. I can also see there's a client for Docker Desktop right here, and I can see it in here as well. Right there, DGR app, there's the repo, and I have tag 1.0. It's running here as well. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I am going to uh, run this image, create a container from this image and run that container. And I can do that because I have it in a repo. I can actually go to a different machine and do this. And as long as that machine has access to my repo, they should be able to run this. Now I'll do that on my machine here, but before I do that, I'm gonna delete the local copy of that image. So I had a local copy, Docker image LS, um, I said, I typed locker, docker image ls, and there's a command docker image rn for remove, and I get, can pass in either this, this uh, full name here or just the image ID, b02. I don't have to type the entire thing. As long as it's unique, I just say b02, and there's only one that starts with b02. It should delete them all. So if I list it again, it's gone. It's not on my local machine at all. But I can still create a... a container from it because it's available inside of that repository. And the way I do that is docker container run dash dash name. And I just give it a name. I can name it whatever I want to. I'll call it app one. And then I'm going to do some port mapping here. This one, remember that this code actually runs on port 8081. Which I'll show you here on port 8081 right here. Well, that's running inside of the container. I really don't have access to that. What I have to do is I have to tell it what port to map locally. I can do 8081 colon 8081 like that, or I could give it a different port number. Uh, if I say 3000 colon 8081, that would work as well. Um, and then the name of the image, DGR slash app one colon 1.0, including the repo it's in. And you can see it didn't find it locally because I deleted it. If it found it locally, it would use that one. But so instead, it went out to Docker Hub, found it, pulled it down, looked at that Docker file, and ran all the instructions inside of that. And I know this is going to be running because if I go to a browser, I can open up port 3000, and it will map to... port 8081 inside that container. So if I go to localhost 3000, like this, there's my page right there. And 
all the code is running right here. Now, I can uh, I can also manage this component here. Actually, first of all, check it out. That I lost my my prompt right here, and the reason I lost it is because I'm running in interactive mode. By default, when I say Docker container run, it runs in an active mode. It runs synchronously, and I don't have my command prompt anymore. If I press Control C right here, then it's it'll give me back my command prompt. But a better way to do that, let me just do this. I'm going to say Docker container. Well, it's Docker container ls right here. See, there's my container right now. It has an ID of CB53, etc. If I want to, I can stop that Docker container stop. CB5 is enough right here. Just take a second and stop. I don't think, even think I need the word container in there. Um, and now, if I say Docker container ls, it's not listed there. That's a little bit frustrating because it's not gone, it's just not running. If I want to see everything that's running and running, there's a switch here, dash A. And that shows the CB5, et cetera, is still in there, but you see that it exited 15 seconds ago. It is not currently running. And in fact, I know that because if I refresh this, then it will return a 404. It won't find it in here. Okay. In fact, I'm going to just totally delete it here. Docker container RM to remove it, similar to the one that removed an image. And all I have to do is just say CB right here. And now when I do docker it's, a, it's not there at all. It's completely gone locally from here. Um, and now if I want to use that same command that I showed you earlier, docker container run, but I don't want it to do synchronously. I want to keep my command prompt. There's actually a switch for doing that. I can just say dash D and the D is for detached. So I want to run in detached mode. Then now it's running, but I get my command prompt back right away. And it is in fact running. You can see how fast it starts up. Docker is really, really fast. So in this demo, I've showed you how to create a new image from code in a folder using the Docker file, how to push it to a repository, and how to create and manage a container based on that image. This is David. Thank you for watching.